This thing is drunk with hatred, and the ego of these people is keeping them in danger. People started to panic and I thought, good, that's how I wanted to see you. I'm a retired ranger from the army. I didn't know what to do when I signed my DD-214. When you have been training on the same thing for 25 years, you get used to it. And when you don't have, you kind of become purposeless. It feels like your regular life was on pause. And now you have to resume, get married, have kids at 45, buy a house, and mow the lawn on Saturdays at 7 a.m. I felt it was too late. So I looked up jobs that required the skills I possessed. Found it at a security company that requires top secret clearance approval. I won't disclose its name for obvious reasons. Clearance? Too easy. I was stationed in the Middle East, providing security for a group of wealthy sheikhs. Working for wealthy sheikhs in their lavish palaces and islands, from Israel to the United Arab Emirates. We are talking about the kind of wealth that the one percenters of the US cannot even compare to. People say money can't buy everything because they haven't met these people. I mean, I was getting paid almost 250000 per year. They throw this yearly event called the Wash Basharian Games. I thought it was just some intense fitness competition, like an Ironman or something. But when I got there, things took a weird turn. Now, you probably won't believe what I'm about to tell you. But that's okay because I don't care about what you think. Anyways, at this point... I was assigned to guard the palace doors leading to the arena where the games happen. It was a massive theater-style room, but kind of like the second floor when you go to watch opera or some other bullcrap rich snobs watch. It had a glass which it could tell it was likely aquarium grade, I don't know, like 8 inches thick, definitely needed. You'll know later why. Down at the arena they had several entrances, gladiator era and probably from that time too, spending a couple hundred grand just to decorate this sick charade. These people could buy anything. The roof of it has remote-controlled windows, and it went up to what I estimate to be probably 50 feet. People started pouring in, all excited to witness these so-called games. We had politicians, dictators, famous artists, and even owners of islands you might have heard of by now, and most of his flight log listed people. They had waiters serving the finest snack of caviar and 500 grand bottles of wine, something I have seen before working for these people. And then... Out of one of the openings, they pulled by force a man. On some big screens, they display his name and crimes against the country. He had several murders. They have him in chains, and they have shock sticks. I thought, that's a little excessive for one man against three guards. But here, they do things differently anyway. At first, he looks like a regular guy. But then something strange happens. While he is fighting against his captors, his appearance starts shifting. Here... My eyes are glued to this man while people cheered and applauded. It was as if his features were caught between two worlds, merging the characteristics of a lion and a canine. His eyes narrowed, resembling those of a predator ready to pounce on its prey. His nose elongated and took on a regal shape, with flaring nostrils. At this point, I am dumbfounded and unsure what I'm looking at. The man's mouth stretched wider, revealing a set of elongated canines that glistened menacingly in the sunlight. But that wasn't the end of it. As if possessed by some supernatural force, his body started expanding right before my eyes. I got goosebumps watching this happen. Muscles bulged and rippled, each limb growing thicker and stronger. His once human frame seemed to double in size. Picture a young Arnold but measuring seven feet. It's like I stumbled upon some real-life creature straight out of a sci-fi movie. You could tell which ones had been there before and the first-timers like myself. Some people were cheering and enjoying the spectacle like this was a daily thing. Others were filled with fear and awe. As the event went on, I had to keep my, what we call, military bearing and do my job. But man, that whole experience left me questioning what I had signed up for. I mean, what the heck were these Wash Basharian games really about? I've seen some wild things in my line of work, but this took the cake. Despite my training and experience, I found myself questioning the limits of what I believe to be possible. I know my way around the basics of Arabic, which is part of the job, I guess. This helped me make sense of the name, Man Beast Games. I thought, where did they get this thing? Is this like an ancient ritual or an experiment? The Man Beast starts going around the arena, trying to find a way to escape. The event proceeds 
and the second opening gate starts to open. The creature backs away as if it had some sort of trauma from every time those doors opened. Out of the opening, they push out another guy. They display an Arabic and English on the big screens, his crimes against the country. Some are simple things like theft, and others you don't want to know. The people in the air-conditioned room enjoying their caviar started to bid on how long it would take the thing to devour the man. I thought, we should throw you guys in there and bid on how long it would take for you to beg for your lives, you cowards. The bid started at 100 grand for 90 seconds, doubling every 10 seconds less, down to 10 seconds for 25 million. Looking at the size of that thing and the size of the criminal, the 10 seconds looked really appealing, but somehow the guy made it to 30 seconds, running away from the thing. The creature was too strong and fast. It probably toyed with him for 25 out of the 30 seconds. Left the guy. Pretty similar to what I saw on my first tour in Afghanistan, when you step on a landmine. Some people booed, others cheered, and the butlers brought the winner some sort of certificate of value. The event kept moving. Victim after victim, the thing kept claiming their lives. They had an interlude in between to grab some more refreshments, and the waiters pulled out the weird stuff. Kangaroo meat, elephant snout, dolphin brains, and much more you don't want me to explain. At first it was unsettling, but after the number 30 rounds, you kind of get used to it, almost bored. A voice in the speakers of the Nightmare Theater announces a special volunteer that will go next to the arena. Looking at how these people operate, it's safe to say that this is more of a voluntold thing, like going to the mandatory fun in the military. While the creature is going around double-checking the remains on the ground, almost like checking for survivors, once again, the gates start to open. The creature once more backs away, but not as far away, almost learning that the next thing coming out of there will be entertainment. From the opening comes out a young woman. I'm not gonna lie, my heart dropped since all the other ones were men, probably scumbags judging based on their crimes. They probably didn't deserve it to that level, but they were criminals all the same. This was a young woman. She looked scared and defenseless. My inner manhood told me to defend her, but I had to contain myself. We gotta do what we gotta do. On the screen, crimes relative of the beast. I was confused. I expected more crime to appear on the list, but the longer I looked at the screen, the lower my heart dropped. No other crimes besides being related to the man-beast. That is where these sick people got their high from watching innocents suffer. That's why she was the special guest. The beast notices its next victim and starts moving across the arena, almost expecting her to run or some reaction. She doesn't move a muscle. She just looks at it straight without batting an eye. The beast gets desperate and starts sprinting toward her. She doesn't move. I think, don't be stupid, move! The beast, in a frenzy, jumps at her and she yells a name in midair. Yosef! The name was shown on the screen when they got the man-beast out of the gate. The beast hesitated, but it was too late. The momentum was there, the speed was too fast, it was too heavy. It crashed into her at a 15 mile per hour dash. Her head almost hit the ground at that speed, probably instantaneous. You can claim to be the hardest mofo there is, but those are the ones I saw crying like babies while we were getting shot on my second tour to Iraq. But this was downright the most gut-strangling moment that etched itself into my memory. The beast had a lucid moment, and it kind of roared and howled simultaneously. It grabbed her mangled body, placed it facing up correctly, and put her arms on her chest. Turned around and looked at the glass. It took off toward it, running faster than before. I could see purpose in its movements. They called out the guards again and they went to him. He slashed them like a knife through butter. They kept sending people, but they wanted to contain it. He made it to the glass and started jumping to break it, grabbed one of the columns of the sides and started pounding on the glass. A voice on the speakers reassures the guests, do not worry, the glass is strong enough, it cannot go through it. He keeps pounding at it in a frenzy, and the glass starts to crack. This thing is drunk with hatred, and the ego of these people is keeping them in danger. People started to panic, and I thought, good, that's how I wanted to see you. The speaker says, please calm down, do not worry, the glass will hold, keep enjoying the entertainment. The screens start showing a diagram of the glass and how thick it is, trying to increase trust, but the glass can't lie.
this beast hasn't been contained and the glass is still cracking. They send more people every few minutes and it slashes them like filleting a salmon. The head of security for the compound runs to me and tells me, almost whispering, we have to put it down. Follow me. Only we from the contracting company have assault rifles. The natives of the country working there are not allowed to have them for security purposes. He rounds up six of us to go down there to take down the beast. We went through several hallways and doors with standard signage for authorized personnel only. Finally, we made it to the backside of the openings. The same feeling of an active war zone got into me, like nervousness, anxiety, and the intense feeling of focus trying to counteract them. We get in there and the beast stops pounding at the glass, drops from the column and comes at us, dashing at probably 30 miles per hour. We don't even think about it and start blasting at it. One of us hits it in the leg and the beast dashes sideways and starts running back to the glass in a zigzag technique. Now it was slower. Another one of us hits it in the arm, gets renewed energy, starts jumping side to side, and makes it to one of us. Slash ripped open his gut they spilled out like soup, uses him as a cover to make it to the next one of us. Neck gone, another cover, another one of us gone, face slashed off. Down to three. He's getting closer. Behind me is the head of security and another one of us is in front. I used to be best of my class in high caliber rifles, long distance targets, aka sniper, so ARs are not my thing. He throws one of the bodies to the guy before me while reloading, and I see an opening. Bang! I shot straight through the guy's ear, hitting the beast in the face. The momentum of the beast's body knocked down the guy before me and it fell on top of him. Finally the threat was contained. To this day, don't know if it felt right or not to take it down. The head of security called the radio the cleanup crew and said, We have another one. I am just a low-level security guard with a ton of combat experience. So I didn't know what he meant by that until another crew came in to disarm the guy that was in front of me during the gunfight and took him in a stretcher. I noticed a rupture in his clothing, like the claws grazed him. I am only assuming this since I never saw the guy again. I was offered to be moved to another location and took it. I don't want to go back there ever again. Sometimes I think I should have let the beast escape or break the glass to eliminate the scum that pays for this kind of entertainment. In these kinds of jobs, you don't quit or get fired. You kind of disappear since, at that point, you have seen too much. But I've made peace with it. Anyway, in this new location, I am doing way better, the pay is way more, and I get 90 days of leave every year. The downside is that it is in an underwater facility on the Pacific coast. Not sure why they need this much security down here. We'll see what happens when I release this. Goodbye. If you watch this entire video, I appreciate your commitment, so you better appreciate mine, so hit that freaking like button before leaving. Anyway, thanks for watching, and keep watching while they're watching you.